coolant pump. So my Chipmaster's coolant pump was destroyed when I bought the machine. And I recently I decided that I need a coolant pump for turnings. And what I did, I bought one of these original coolant pumps for the Chipmaster. And this one is a three-phase pump. And it, it runs on 380, 440 or high voltage three phase or low voltage three phase which is 220 250 uh, anyway uh, what I'm hoping because I don't have three phase supply other than my static converter is that I can rewire this to run on single phase in conjunction with the converter so I can run both the machine and the coolant pump. First off, I will take the cap off because um, there must be a junction box underneath the, the switch. And hopefully I can rewire it. I'm pretty sure I can rewire it because I have seen exactly the same pump on my Ford mills as a coolant pump and they were they had a capacitor on the line and they were having a I think they were having a different plate like me saying 220 volts single phase I'm not sure but let's see what we can do with this wanna come off really might need some encouragement Might be that the the switch, the knob, needs to be taken off first. But I can't see any screw here. Or we'll just try to pry it off if I can. Yep, prying off does work. And yes, there is a nice setup here. And unfortunately, I think if I take this gasket off, this will break into bits and pieces. So I will try to save it with a um, Stanley knife just to cut underneath. Oh, don't tell me this is not a Stanley knife. Actually, this is not that bad. Comes off easy. Just have to keep the blade at a good angle so I don't cut into the gasket. Probably years of sitting in oil didn't do good to this gasket. Might put a new one. And yes, this actually looks quite uh, nice inside and I almost swallowed my courage talking to you about uh, rewiring this uh, this switch actually this is a switch and I think all the motor wiring is done around the switch I almost um, yeah swallowed my courage but look at this what's hidden in here Yes, this is the wiring of a Colchester. So, looking at the drawing, it's pretty much very obvious on the star high voltage connection. You can see the three lines connecting. This this is the middle of the star. If you look at the diagram, the star connection, 
and probably some of the one of the wires like black goes to red there's a coil in between the two brown and blue has a coil in between them and then gray with yellow or any other way i don't know which which one is which has the coil in between them uh, on the simpler version on the low voltage range we can see you have a mains voltage coming in it's even more obvious that you have la and the switch switches la with 1a and lb switches with 1b and then lc switches with 1c so basically all i have to do is as we can see there's like a star connection here there's nothing here on the d so i take these three wires off and black goes to 1a brown goes to 1c and gray goes to 1b and this obviously won't work because we only have a single phase supply and there's like a three phase needed here what we can do we can supply the, the two lines like line voltage and neutral which we have from our single phase main and in between the the line voltage and the third line we add a capacitor and this is usually calculated there's like a table of uh, capacitors for different um, motors motor outputs and just look that up take the capacitor and this should run so as you can see this is connection d and i have the three wires brown black and gray was it let me check the drawing again black brown and gray yes so i need to take these three so i basically i can literally take this off and rewire each wire to their corresponding uh, connections and we have a low voltage motor These are my three wires. I will take brown first. So brown goes 1C. It should go here. There's a yellow there. And yes, there is a should be a yellow at 1C. So brown with yellow and 1C. And I won't do it under it all the way. I will just pull brown here, then shove it underneath the the yellow. It's a bit of a fiddly job, but it's doable. Come on, get in there. There you go. Tighten it back. It's just a low voltage motor, so it doesn't have to be super tight. I will just go to the next. I'll take gray. And gray is together with blue on 1B. And this is 1B. And it is blue, but a bit darker blue, anyway. Sorry being so clumsy, I'm doing this left-handed, so you can see what I'm doing. Yep. Was it grey? Yeah, I think so. Shove grey in there.
Ah. Tidy it up. And I'm left with the black wire here. Black wire, 1A with red. 1A. Look at that. Soon I will be a professional motor reviver. Now oh, that's done. Just double check the. I will put back this. Maybe when I will wire it back to three face. Maybe who knows when? Maybe never. It's good to have it there. Never knows. Clumsy me, I know. Bit more tidying up. We'll fold this back together exactly as it was, or maybe hopefully. Yeah, 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 I'm getting there. And put it back here for the next time. And I think I won't bother with this uh, gasket. We'll just put it back here. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then say, let it be. I will take it off again and and um, put up a new gasket. Screws first. Now it's time to put the the knob back. But I've just realized what I missed. And if you look here, there's a hole. There's a tiny little hole here. And if I clear that out, this was so mucky I couldn't see the hole. And if you clear the hole, if you look if you know to look for it, then you then you clear it out. No, oh, there's wolf inside. Uh, what it happens is there's a, you can see there's like a tube, almost like a tube. It's like an indent, in a casting, or whatever this is. There's a copper thingy there, and I think there's a screw, which holds the shank of the switch, the shaft of the switch, which grips it. So what I need to do is undo the screw, take a tiny screwdriver, undo the screw put the knob on and then screw back on so this is for you to know if you are taking apart yours don't don't pry your knob off as I did all I need to do now is uh, strip the insulation this is my single face and because I don't have the right capacitor I looked up the, the book and it says it should run according to the power consumption of um, 1.5 microfarad capacitor, run, start and run capacitor, just to make that clear. <clears throat> but because I don't have one of those, I will try one of these, which is 0.22 microfarads. Hopefully it will start it and I might prove my point today here to you that uh, this can be done. And I won't need the yellow wire and I think I may as well just disconnect it from here 
or cut it off from here so I don't accidentally electrocute myself or short it somewhere onto the machine and then I get electrocuted and I will use one of these and now the interesting part comes here where I have my live and neutral and I will have the neutral here the live here and one side of the capacitor one leg of the capacitor and the other leg of the capacitor just here like that and from this you can see how easy it is to wire up a three phase motor with the help of the capacitor to a single phase voltage just trying to it so we can see it and I will switch the power on now and as you can see and as you can hear it started up a bit slow because the capacitor is not the right capacity it should be a lot larger but it does run let me not electrocute myself Well, I think it's you can't see it because it rotates so fast that I will stop it and now you can see it I will turn it back on yeah it starts up a little bit lazy sluggish but then it runs okay and it's very I have to say this is ultra silent That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.